got a pretty unique story when it comes to what got me started on the drums. When seventh grade rolled around, my dad signed me up for a school band, and I went down and <clears throat> they passed out instruments to everybody at the thing, and I was one of the last guys, and they handed me a tuba and said, here, you're gonna be a tuba player, and I was like, hell yeah. Took it home, I'm sitting in the living room blowing on this thing at lunchtime, you know, you have to make this funny <laughs> buzzing noise when you blow into it to make, it, make that big tuba sound. And my dad comes running out of his bedroom in his underwear, and he's like, what the hell is going on in here? And I said, dude, I'm going to be a tuba player. Check it out. And he's like, no, you're not, son. And he went straight to his room, put his clothes on, comes back, and he goes, get in the car with me. We're going up to see your band director. You're going to play the drums. I was honestly heartbroken at the time. And he went up there, changed me over to the drums, and then the very next day when I started in drums, I was like, oh, thank God, man. So my dad changed the course of heavy metal. The first uh, major band I was ever in, was the only band at the time, Pantera. You know, we started that band, me and my brother, from day one. And uh, we started off as a cover band. You know, we covered everybody from Van Halen to Judas Priest, Motley Crue, everything that was happening at the time. Uh, we could play any nightclub in the world. And, uh, you know, at least in our local area, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and always sell it out, always have it packed. We'd do three, four sets a night. And, uh, you know, it was a great cover band. And, and once again, once my dad intervened, he goes, you know what, you guys are awesome, but you're never going anywhere until you learn to write your own songs, you know? We went bingo. So we started writing our own songs. And instead of making demo tapes, we would record them. And we started off very early putting out records. And our first record was Metal Magic, 1983. After being turned down by every label on the face of the earth 22 times, uh, I guess uh, Mother Nature intervened and, and helped us get a record deal. Back in 89 when they had that Hurricane uh, Hugo that hit North Carolina, uh, there was an A&R guy from uh, Atco Records and he got stuck in Dallas and so he called the head guy, Derek Schulman, who signed Bon Jovi, signed Cinderella, I mean this guy is just one of the biggest in the industry and said, hey, I'm stuck in Texas, what should I do? And he goes, well, there's this band named Pantera that's been sending me records over the years, and they're pretty good, why don't you go see how they are live, you know? So the guy calls me up on the phone, had this real deep voice, says, Mark Ross at it. And I'm like, yeah, another jack off from a record company, you know? He goes, I need to come see you guys play, whether it's at a warehouse or whatever. And I said, well, we just happened to be playing a Mexican disco tonight, man. And it's a little girl's birthday, and it's at a Mexican disco, and if you'd like to come, cool, and if you don't, cool. Because we just had it with these dudes up to our eyeballs, you know? And so, uh, trying to make a long story short, uh, he shows up, you know, and we're at this little disco, and we're ready to go on, and I just tell the dude he's straight up, I said, you know, we're here to kick some ass, we're serious, you know, and so we get up on stage, we just play our asses off, we're going as hard as we can. About five songs into it, we see him go out the door, and everybody turns around and looks at me, hey, he left, man, this party, we start slamming beers sliding all over the stage, throwing birthday cake at each other, and all of a sudden, about four or five songs later, hey, he's back, man, he came back in, he's back. Oh, no, let's get serious again, you know? So we finished the set, and before I could even get it all the way away from behind the drums, the dude comes walking up to me, and he grabs me, and I said, what, dude? And he goes, dude, that was absolutely the best live band I've ever seen in my life. I said, really? I said, well, why'd you leave? He goes, I went out to the car to call Derek and tell him we're signing you guys. I'm like, bam! So that's how we got our major label deal, and the rest was history with Pantera because we knew, you know, after all those years, seven years in nightclubs, that we had the goods. We just needed to get to the, you know, the masses, and, and we did. And then, uh, you know, after 14 good years of that, some other people in the band decided that, you know, the band wasn't important to them anymore and kind of left uh, me and Dime out in the cold, so we decided to form Damage Plan. And uh, that was something that was a new adventure for us. It was a lot of fun. It was fun playing music again because after being in Pantera for so long, you know, it, was, it, it became a grind, you know, especially with the personalities that were, you know, conflicting and things like that. So this, that was a fresh thing. It was a lot of fun. And of course, everybody knows how that ended. It was very tough uh, for me to, you know, figure out what was for me next, you know. So I decided to form my own label, Big Ben Records, and put out Rebel Meets Rebel, which was really cool. Some of the best guitar playing Dime ever did, and some of probably the first real, you know, combination, culmination of heavy metal and country music put together. You know, the real deal. You know, Rebel meets Rebel. I mean, David Allen Coe definitely was the outlaw of country music, and you know, Pantera was always the outlaw of heavy metal. You know, so those two fit together perfectly. And then, uh, you know, after playing some with uh, Sammy and Mike down in Cabo a couple times, Sammy Hagar, Michael Anthony. 
and uh, various bands from Disturbed to Black Label to Anthrax would always get me to come up and play. I knew I still wanted to play, you know, and so uh, when the Hell Yeah guys contacted me before it was even Hell Yeah, I just, hey, we're thinking about putting this band together, you know, I got really excited about it. And so jumped into it full force and uh, it turned out to work out great, man. It's, it's my baby now. I love it. Hell Yeah, it's, you're going to be seeing a new record from us at the end of the year and back on tour again. I remember seeing Alex Van Halen, he was a huge influence on me and he always used two bass drums pushed together. And so I uh, started off with that and then the 14 by 14, 15 by 15, 18 by 18. It used to be 16 by 16 and then an 18 by 18, but like I was telling these guys, it's way too hard to reach around there and you can't hit it and it just is a big, big mess. So one floor Tom kids is all you really need. I know somebody might try to say two because I make a little bit more money off of it, but one is all you really need, I gotta be honest. Anyways, and I really like the sound of them because uh, with that extra depth, it, it gives them a little bit more attack and a little bit more decay on the bottom end, you know. And people always recognize the hat, the beard, the face, the look, you know. So I immediately went, man, if we had that dragon on, the, on, the, on a drum, did it just like the hat, it'd be amazing. And we did that, and then we took it to another level with these guys coming up with the pearl inlay, which is amazing. I mean, that just push the whole thing over the top and there's not another custom snare drum out there like it. It's you know eight inch maple all the way through. It's got the satin rims on it which is really really cool and uh, it's just a great sound of drum. You know you can really crank it up and get that snap that you need and if you want to tune it down and have a little bit more balls well it's nice and deep and it'll give you those too. Along with the new line of hardware which is so come so far from where D-Drum started with their hardware. It's an amazing line of hardware. We got the new Vinnie Paul pedal called the VP1 and it's uh, made out of aluminum which is, gives it plenty of strength to uphold any kind of monster feet you might have but it's light enough to get you that kind of action that you really want and uh, every pedal is made to where you can make it into a double pedal so it's not like well if you get a single and all of a sudden you want to switch to double you got to buy two you can convert it yourself they play great uh, that's all I can tell you man I sit down uh, the first set that, that we tried out actually used in the demo video, I didn't even adjust them. I mean, I took them out of the box, put them on, and just said, let's see how they play, you know? And I was like, and I had my usual ones that I'd been using prior to that, sitting there ready to put on the kit, and I was just like, it, man. These are great, you <laughs> know? Nice and light, they play good, solid, awesome. The reason why I moved over to D-Drum is they gave me an opportunity to have my own line of drums, something that I always dreamed of having, and, you know, I always want to do more than just be a drummer. I wanted to be able to bring drums to drummers. And I think we've, you know, this is the first company that's going to have these custom sized drums available to the public. Uh, I've always had them custom made previous to this. And uh, I'm just really proud of it. I'm happy. I, the drums sound amazing. You know, that was one of the most important things to me coming over is the quality of the product had to be as good, if not better. And uh, I'm really happy to be able to bring you the Vinnie Paul drum line from D Drum.